Thank you and welcome, Jojo. Um, I'd like to start with sort of a straightforward question. What is ecocide? Ecocide is broadly understood to mean mass damage and destruction of nature. And it's a word that's becoming increasingly used around the world. Etymologically, it literally means from the Greek and Latin to kill one's home, which we can see happening to our planet. And in the context of today's conversation, it, it's probably appropriate to actually say that ecocide means war on nature, which is what we've been committing over yeah. recent decades. Which is a, just an amazing description that you, we spoke about, war on nature, you know, which is just absolutely amazing. Look, uh, tell us about yourself, your amazing journey. What's brought you to this, this point today? Well, there's a kind of story behind that in the sense that, I mean, I always had a kind of thread of care for and love of nature that possibly came from my mother, who's a singer and a songwriter with a deep inspiration for her is, is the earth and the seasons. Um, but I guess you might have called me an armchair activist. I, you know, we would happily sit there signing petitions and sending the occasional letter to my local MP, that kind of thing. Um, but 10 years ago, my little daughter, she was five then, she overheard me talking about fracking which is this very polluting way of getting oil and gas from deep in the earth. And she burst into tears and she said, Mummy, if they're poisoning the ground, they must understand they're poisoning themselves. They're going to die. You've got to call them and tell them to stop. And, and what I realised was that, you know, she was and five. She, she was five. When yeah, she was five. This was, okay. I mean, she was five and she just understood that yeah, yeah. intuitively. Yeah. And of course, what that made me realise is, hang on a minute, everyone should understand this intuitively. Yeah. And, and that really got me up out of that armchair. And I started researching, started publishing leaflets, giving talks, you know, running demonstrations, this kind of thing. And that is what led me, that work is what led me to contact with a remarkable barrister uh, from Scotland, Polly Higgins, who um, was working on what seemed to be an incredibly simple response to the mass damage and destruction of nature, which she called ecocide. Um, and she was simply saying, make it a crime. And I remember this just totally kind of landing with me and, and just think, you know, feeling intuitively, this is obvious. But back then, it, it was still considered really quite radical. I mean, this was before the, the shocking IPCC reports about you know, the climate um, emergency. It was, it was before the, the activist protests, before the school strikes led by Greta Thunberg, before Extinction Rebellion, the Sunrise Movement, all of these things. Um, and before that kind of, I suppose, that public awareness was really starting to take in the seriousness of the situation that we're faced with, with climate and ecological crisis. And so now I think we're in a situation where criminalising the worst harm to nature actually feels like quite a kind of common sense thing to do. And when we, you know, when we kind of uh, co-founded what is now Stop Ecocide International, um, it was it was effectively based around Polly's following around the world. She'd already established, you know, a, a sort of worldwide uh, following interested, but it's grown and grown. We sadly no longer have Polly with us. She died of cancer in 2019, but we do have many, many others that have joined us over that time, you know, from all walks of life, all, all parts of the world. I mean, law, politics, faith, youth, academics, NGOs, and actually interestingly, recently, even business and finance coming in on this conversation. And we now have um, groups, associate teams and so on in over 45 countries and all advocating for this very specific thing, which is to effectively criminalise the worst harms to nature. Yeah, so, I mean, and that's the point, criminalising it, because that moves it to a whole new level, mm -hmm. and that, that, which is, a, an, an, you know, I, I guess, why a crime of ecocide? What's so special about this specific legal route? I think what's really important is to think about you know, what is specific about criminal law. And I think criminal law is often perceived as a structure for punishing people. And yes, that is how it works, of course, but that's not actually what it's for. Um, if you think about it, I mean, you know, murder isn't a crime in order to punish murderers. It's a crime to stop people killing each other. So effectively, the whole principle of criminal law is preventive. It's deterrent. It's protective. Um, and effectively, what, we, what it's about is what does society consider unacceptable? What do we consider to be unsafe? And that's where it becomes you know, obvious, in a sense, why this needs to be in the criminal law sphere, because what we've been doing and how we've been damaging the natural living world around us over recent decades, while often unintentional, is actually incredibly dangerous. 
it's dangerous to climate, it's dangerous to people, it's dangerous to those ecosystems that sustain us. Um, and so in the context of that, it becomes you know, quite clear why criminal law is appropriate. But I think there are also several aspects, I mean, there are many, but, but there are a few key aspects of um, criminalizing ecocide that are very important because I mean, you, w w one thing that people often say to us is, well, you know, there's plenty of environmental law. Why isn't that enough? Um, but the reality is that, yes, there are, there's a huge body of environmental law around the world, um, but it's often poorly followed, um, badly enforced and often woefully monitored. Um, and part of this is that um, fundamentally we don't take damage to nature seriously enough. So when we put in place something that says you do this much damage, this severe damage, and that becomes a crime, that actually sort of fills those gaps and supports that structure in a way that isn't there. I mean, if you're working for human rights, at least you'd know that you know, mass murder, torture, all of these things are serious crimes, but there's no equivalent in the environmental sphere. So that is one of the things that ecocide law puts in place. And, and that's what you're trying to set out and, 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 and explain to everybody that actually this is this should be a crime exactly. and, 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 and taken seriously. It, it feels, and, and we've spoken earlier, this isn't something that would be nice to do. This is an absolute must. It's not a, you know, can you, can you, can you, can you explain your feelings on that? This is a, a must do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, basically we are not in for an easy ride over the coming decades. I think we're all now aware of this in terms of how far um, this has developed, the, you know, the climate situation and, and how much destruction we've been sort of wreaking effectively on our environment through, um, you know, mass extraction and, you know, overfishing. I mean, there are so many examples, you know, and pollution examples. Um, that effectively this ha you know we have to put an outer boundary we have to put a safety rail in place because one of the things that we're seeing at the moment around the world is this huge kind of rising frustration that the pace of action on climate and ecological breakdown is so slow you know governments and industry are simply simply appear unable to operate or move quickly enough and even and we're even seeing from the corporate world now we're starting to see people saying look give us some guidance give us some decent regulations so that we can actually move this in the right direction and that is one of the things that ecocide law can provide and in particular um, I mean, one of the key milestones over the last um, couple of years is that we were actually approached and I suppose I should give a bit of a context in the sense that there have been different definitions of ecocide over the years from different lawyers but generally it's been from you know a lawyer or a small group saying what they think it should look like but we were approached in 2020 by parliamentarians from Sweden who said to us, you know, obviously this is your area of expertise. Could you convene, could you commission a definition that is global, that is that has a kind of consensus to it that we could actually genuinely take to our government and say, you know, would you propose this to add it to the list of international crimes alongside genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity? And that request gave us the basis of being able to pull together a group of 12 top lawyers from around the world. And they spent six months, and based, based on a, a public consultation which, with which we started the process, they spent six months drafting a definition of ecocide. And what was so beautiful is that they emerged from those six months with a consensus definition, which was remarkable given that they all came from different areas of the world, yeah. but also different legal backgrounds, different ideological stances. Yeah. Um, and they came back with a core definition that was really beautiful and concise, and it's so concise that it fits on the back of my business card. Um, and this is super useful when you're dealing with a busy politician who doesn't have time to read through 20 pages. Um, but I will just read it because it really is yeah, so clear and concise. Do. Ecocide means unlawful or wanton acts committed with knowledge that there's a substantial likelihood of severe and either widespread or long-term damage to the environment being caused by those acts. So although, I mean, you, you wouldn't necessarily know if you hadn't studied the, the treaties behind yeah. it, but that is actually familiar language yes, to lawyers yeah. and, and, and those who know that the, the, the history yeah. of, of, of that, that area of law. But at the same time, it's super simple and easy for you and I to understand. Yeah. And what we have found is, is, is kind of coming back to that, you know, how do, you know, corporations and governments really respond to the situation that we're in? What this gives is a beautifully concise almost a lens yeah. that they can look through and, and, and actually anyone that's an expert in their sector will automatically 
be using it that way. They'll they'll, they'll read it and they they'll will see their I mean, activities it's through it's it. It's beautiful that it fits on the back of a business card, which is in itself fantastic. I want to ask you a couple of questions because I know yeah. we're, we're, we're cutting out on time, but some things that how seriously are governments taking this now? You've moved through your journey. How serious are they getting? This is really gaining serious political traction now. Okay. We still sometimes have people say to us, oh, that sounds like a good idea. And then we say, well, no, this is way beyond a good idea. This is actually an established direction of travel. Just to give you a sense, you know, three, four years ago, no governments were talking about this. Now, dozens of governments are. Some of them on public record, some behind closed doors. But this is a conversation that is happening at the international level, based around the International Criminal Court, as we discussed, the international crimes, but also at national level. So, you know, various countries are putting bills through. I mean, Brazil and Belgium, a couple of examples off the top of my head, but also at a regional level. Right now, this month, the EU is having discussions around the potential inclusion of ecocide level crimes into EU law. So this has moved very fast. Yeah. Very fast indeed, and it, it, it's it's not now really a question of if; it's a question of when. It's a question, of when. and you're and you're feeling governments are absolutely listening now. They are indeed. Now, what's interesting is that they may not like it, in, in the, you know, but we have already reached the stage where no government is going to outright object to this. They'd be far too embarrassed to do so. How yes, are they going to look if they do that? And as for the big, you know, polluting companies, they've spent however many millions and billions on, you know, uh, greenwashing. Um, so they're not exactly going to come out against this in public. So, uh, you know, on one level, it, you could almost think of it as the easiest campaign in the world because who's going to disagree with it? We obviously really need this. Yeah. So there is a direction of travel that is clearly there. Two quick things. How long before we, before we can see a tangible, real, you know, the, the normal person can feel and see something where this is actually working? So there are a few um, countries that have ecocide in their criminal codes, but it's going to be probably still a few years, not many we think, um, before it's you know, more kind of widespread and actually being established in lots of countries. Um, and potentially we see this becoming a crime at the International Criminal Court within the next four to five years, okay. um, which sounds like a long time, but yeah, obviously many that, people say, that, well, hang on, we need this now. Is that soon enough? Yeah, well, uh, it's interesting that you say that because, well, firstly, we believe it will certainly be in place before 2030. Okay. A lot of the kind of, you know, goals that the global community is setting itself are, are set around yeah. 2030, and it's very important that it's in place, and we believe it will be. But there is also an importance to there being a certain time lapse, not a big one, but a certain time lapse between when people hear about it and understand it and when it's in place, because that is is the window for strategic change where you know this and this that's already starting to happen we're already seeing you know companies and investors and so on you know starting to think about this as a framework that's approaching that's going to be a driver and influencer of change and you need that gap for that to happen you just don't want it to be too long yeah no absolutely it, it, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you're getting real traction which is amazing um, w one last question if people want to support if people want to get involved how can they do this well we First, advise them to go to our website. Very yeah. easy to find, stopecocide.earth. Yeah. Um, you'll find us really easily. There's an Act Now menu on that site that's yeah. as long as my arm. Yeah. Um, so there's many things that people can do. But one of the absolutely key things is use the word. Describe mass destruction of nature as ecocide. Use the word ecocide. It's okay. powerful. It has its own internal momentum. And also connect with others. I mean, we, what started out as a strategy of we'll talk to whoever will listen has actually ended up as a concrete strategy of let's bring different sectors, different groups together to all hear about this. So every event we do has half a dozen organisations involved. Yeah. It's all about the connectivity uh, because politicians don't like being the first to a party. They no. want to feel safe. So the more people that are talking about it, the faster it goes. G getting ecocide into every generation, every, Absolutely. In every way. Absolutely. Must be... And the youth movement has really picked up on yeah. this, actually. I was going to really say, has that, has that been something that. that's been yeah. a, a, a faster growing than the government's or is it? Is it it's, uh, kind of, it's kind of running in parallel and, and, and we, we think that these, you know, the sort of civil society side and the, and the political side are, are really starting to kind of um, you know join the dots now so that's yeah. very exciting to see so they are all coming together um, look we're, we're close to running out of time and I have to pass the back to Jeremy your passion and enthusiasm is absolutely compelling it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you um, so thank you very much it's been a, I've really enjoyed thank it you. and it's you're very it's infectious <laughs> the, the absolute, and, I shall be, and I shall be using uh, ecocide all the time and pushing as much as I can amazing thank you